Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord, and let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God, for he is our God, and we are his people and the sheep of his hand. Let us stand as we sing together our opening hymn, number 454 in the Moravian Book of Worship. remain standing as we join together in the liturgy for creation which is found on page 26 we will be singing as a congregation all parts of the liturgy this morning Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all the shining stars. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. 
Princes and rulers, men and women, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget none of his benefits. He forgives our sins and heals our diseases. He redeems our lives and crowns us with love and compassion. We have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, in full assurance of faith, and confess our sins. Gracious God, we confess to you our sins, sins of oppression, when prejudice, fear, and hate rule our hearts, sins of neglect, when we poison the earth for profit, or we ignore pleas for mercy and justice, sins of pride, and sins of greed. Lord, forgive us when we feed our anger and bathe in our despair. Have mercy, O God, according to your unfailing love. Wash away all our iniquities and cleanse us from our sins. Amen. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for those who fear him. As far as east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Praise of our Creator, let us affirm our faith. Please stand. I believe in the one and true God, the Father of humanity, who creates and sustains the universe in wisdom and power, who calls us into being and into a relationship with God by grace, whose nature is love. I believe in Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We offer to you 
Thanks to you, Creator God, for your artistry and frost and snow and the icy stillness of winter, and for the new life bursting forth and blooming in spring. We thank you for the seasons of the Spirit, for joy and sorrow, for pleasure and pain, for gladness and grief, for friendship and solitude. We are grateful to you for your sustaining presence in all circumstances and for giving us the strength through which you can do all things. We pray for those who, because of greed or selfishness, exploit the gifts of the earth that they may learn to be careful stewards of your creation. We pray for all who, by their commitment and involvement, are working to preserve our planet, that you would multiply and increase the number of those who are involved. We pray for those who suffer from prejudice, poverty, or pain, that you would draw near to them and provide for them true justice and mercy. We pray for those who lives. We pray for your whole church, that it may become a powerful agent of reconciliation and renewal in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for all people, that everyone will recognize your awesome majesty, and bow the obedience and joyful service. At this time, I would like to invite the young people to come forward. We'll see if we have any nursery members today. Well, they can catch up when they get... Oh, there they come. (laughs) All two of them. Oh, there we go. Well, good morning. How are you guys doing? Good. Has the countdown for summer began yet or not quite? Mm, Not yet, not yet. Wow, you're holding out. Nice job. Uh, I have uh, something up here that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. First, uh, does anybody know what this is? An iPod Shuffle, yes. And connected to it are some earbuds, yes. Uh, Just yesterday, I was using that as I was out on a run. I needed something to listen to, and that was um, easy as cake. I got to run with some of my favorite music. And our lesson today is also about being able to listen and how we can listen to God. But unfortunately, our Bibles don't come with headphones. And um, there's never really a time where we can just plug into something and, it's, and feel like we are in the presence of God. It might not always be that easy. And I ask that we all focus and try our best to slow ourselves down, unplug from the other things that might be distracting us, and try to listen to God as best we can. And listening to God can give you some amazing opportunities. I think of Sylvie Hauser in the Czech Republic. She listened to God's call in her life, and she has been able to 
take that opportunity and work for the Moravian Church, and it is sure something that has been of great value to her, and it's something she will cherish for a very long time. And I would ask that as you grow, out, grow older and as the years go by, um, please make sure that you're giving time to listen to God and hear what he has to say, because I'm sure he has absolutely amazing plans for you. Thanks for coming up.
what a blessing it is when we have the opportunity to turn off all the distractions and listen to God, whether it's here in worship this morning and, and the joy of hearing our choir share with us those beautiful harmonies, or, or whether it's the rest of our congregation down at Mount Morris as they're gathered in at worship this moment, or if it's the opportunity that you've had to, to walk along the Bay Shore, to be in the woods, to sit with a loved one in prayer, those opportunities to hear God speak. And in response to God speaking to us, we are given the joy of faith and the love that we have as a community and an opportunity to respond. And so I invite our ushers to wait upon us for a morning offering. in the beauty of this spring day we give you thanks for our many blessings we lift up to you those who we know are in need of your healing touch those who hearts whose hearts grieve we are grateful lord to hear that the moravians and nepal have been safe but we lift up to all those who have lost loved ones in this terrible tragedy the earthquake there gracious lord be with our church family that are down at the retreat at mount morris bring them home safely we pray that it has been a time of renewal, and Lord, we lift up to you and give you thanks today for the birth of Dylan. We are looking forward so much, Lord, to all that he will do and become, and we pray for especially your blessing upon Rachel and Justin as they enter into this life of parenthood, that they will know your love and comfort and the support of all of their church family. Lord, be with us as we worship this day as we seek to hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated.
11 through 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. I have to be honest with you, the walk up those steps from coming up for the announcements to coming up for a sermon is a little bit different. <laughs> um, uh, for most of uh, the past 10 years of my life or so, uh, distance running has been a big part of my life. Um, that is, I'm sure, no uh, surprise to many of you in the congregation who have seen me through the years. Uh, it's not a glamorous sport. It requires a lot of hard work, and you have to be at least a little bit crazy to train year-round in Wisconsin. Even before I began running, I remember watching my older brother, Joel, race at the high school level. Uh, and while I feel my interest in running was sparked uh, by watching Joel, my mother likes to take credit uh, for whispering cross-country into my ears as I was a baby because she knew I was going to be too little for football. <laughs> uh, but as a younger sibling, I both wanted to be like my big brother, and I also wanted to beat him. Uh, and growing up, uh, the two of us were always best of friends. We played the same sports, we did the same musical instruments, and we even went to the same college. He was, he was and still is my role model. From working shifts at the Dairy Queen together, to racing in high school and college together, even if he wanted to, he couldn't get rid of me. When we were younger, I ran mainly just because he ran. And as we got older, we got to run together more and more. Our summers in high school and college consisted of working the day shift at the DQ and heading out to the dunes right after to run. Uh, at our peak, we would run anywhere between 70 to 100 miles a week, so we got to know those trails very, very well over the years. And even though summer training could drag on and on, uh, we never really got sick of it because we had each other. Early on, I still hadn't gotten to a place where running was a sport for me. It was mainly a sport that I did because it brought me closer to Joel and it gave me an opportunity to spend more time with him. But eventually, I found uh, my own love for what the sport of running had to offer. On some of our runs, we would go slow, talk and joke, and we were content to just pile up the miles. Uh, some runs, we would uh, sing some of our favorite songs. I'm sure we looked like a bunch of weirdos running down 3rd Ave or wherever, trying to sing even though we were out of breath and panting. Um, but we enjoyed it, and those were our easy days. And other days were faster, uh, more quiet, and more intense. Usually the last four or five miles, we would gradually pick up the pace and push each other to the end. We would weave through the trails, not racing, but working together. By the time we had a mile or two to go, our footsteps would be in sync, and it felt like we were flying. I can still hear the sound of our shoes hitting the ground together as we sped through those quiet woods. We probably could have ran forever on days like that. Uh, nothing else mattered, to be honest. When those runs were finished, I would feel so proud. Um, I could feel the great bond we had shared from those miles we spent in stride together. The sense of accomplishment was so special to me because I got to share it with somebody I looked up to so much. Having the opportunity to put the world on pause and escape to those trails with Joel led me to the appreciate running in a whole different light. It became a form of therapy. Slowing everything else down and listening to our footsteps as we worked together was something very special to me. If either of us had a rough day or were stressed out about something, we would take it out on the soles of our shoes together. Some of our best memories we have with each other were spent in complete silence, just flying through those woods. Even as teammates in college, that tradition continued. We would have 20 or so other uh, teammates to run with, 
But more often than not, somehow Joel and I would always end up broke off or just side by side. And we didn't usually have to say much to each other. Uh, we just knew that we had somebody next to us in stride with us who loved and cared about us so much, and that was our strength. That person supporting you, giving you the guidance while sharing the same workload that you are working with. I wouldn't have gotten hooked on running if I wasn't able to hear that connection with my brother. It gave me such strength knowing what we could accomplish and that he was by my side. All I had to do was listen. As time went on, we weren't able to run as much together, but I still found motivation and a love for the sport because it reminded me of that relationship I share with him. And running has given me so much as a result. Uh, I've met some of my best friends to this day from running. I've learned a lot about myself, and I've learned a lot about the value of patience and hard work through the sport of running. Part of who I am today, in all honesty, is because of what the gift of running has been given to me. And simply listening to our footsteps on those summer days made me appreciate the gift we shared, and that is what turned running into a lifelong passion for me. In our passion today, we are shown how valuable listening to the right voice is. While the sheep might have others calling them or leading them astray, they are blessed because, because they know their shepherd's voice, and they follow it. It sounds so easy for them. They are given love and protection because they just follow that right voice. But at times, the right voice isn't that simple to find. It is so easy in the times we live in to pick out the negative things around us or all the distractions that consume our lives, and it can be overwhelming, and we can feel lost, or like we have forgotten what that voice sounds like. It can be extremely challenging to feel in tune or in sync with the Lord because you are so consumed in other things and have so, so much on your mind. But today the Lord reminds us that just as he knows us as his sheep, we know him. He knows that there are distractions and temptations in the world that will try to pull us away and scatter us, but he assures us that through all of our challenges, downfalls, or moments we feel lost, we know him. We know his voice. He says that so simply, and it is to the most basic of understanding for him. It's a sense of calming and a sense of guidance for us that deep down, at the end of the day, we still know him. His voice was the footsteps I heard that gave me strength and provided such a special bond between two brothers. His voice is in all of the little things we experience and that give us a sense of purpose and belonging. To follow him, we have to be willing to slow ourselves down and seek him. He is leading us in ways we won't be able to appreciate unless we are actively listening. I invite you to take a step back and contemplate how the Lord leads you every day. It may be through something you have grown accustomed to or taken for granted over the years. It's usually something that is so simple. And it may be through the example of others in our community. God's voice is heard in the, in the day-to-day blessings that we receive. But what are we listening to? We often have so many things on our mind and on our plates that listening to the work of the Lord can be difficult. And the work of the Lord is so prevalent and so frequent in our lives that it often goes unnoticed. Or even when it is unnoticed, we don't recognize the importance or the weight of his work, such as the the birth of a child in our congregation, the joy and the love that that can portray, or just little gifts every day, the things that pick us up, keep us moving, and make us feel whole as a person, the things that drive us closer to our Lord. And it may be hard to pay attention through all that noise. But if we listen to his guidance in all of the simple wonders we have in this world, we will see seemingly ordinary events turn our lives into much more. Those aspects of our lives that make us who we are and give us strength, even though they may seem simple, they are the result of God's voice at his loudest. All we have to do is listen. Amen. Please rise and join me for our closing hymn number 699 in the Moravian Book of Worship.
Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Amen.